Hi. Hi. Welcome to Track Girl Summer. I am your host, Hi. Natasha Hastings, and this is my co-host, Corey Carter, and we're bringing the culture to track and field. Yes, we are. Sorry. I had like a little hiccup in my throat. Oh, sorry. Got it. <laughs> track Girl Summer. Track Girl Summer. Follow me, Natasha Hastings, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, follow the Corey Monster, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, no Facebook. Most importantly, actually, you do this every time. I'm there. Yeah, but you're not on it. So not Facebook. Um, but most importantly, the reason why you're here, follow Track Girl Summer, Facebook, Facebook. See, now look. Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, okay, trackgirlsummer.com, all right? We're coming to you every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. We're doing things a little bit differently now. As you can see, you know, we, we got to switch it up. Life happens, but, you know, we're still bringing the tea. We're still bringing the shenanigans just in a little bit of a different format, but we're still delivering. Um, So, oh, yeah. Yeah. Is this our first non-live show? This is our first non-live show. We've we've done one where I did like a, we inserted a pre-recorded interview, but this is like the first time. I feel like I'm gonna miss the chat, but honestly, I'm no, I'm I'm not gonna miss the chat because our guest today is so fire. I probably wouldn't be looking at it anyway. So, yeah, our guest Sorry, yeah. today is dope. Um, you know, here we always say we are fans of the athletes, but more so fans of the people. Um, but this guest today is someone that we've said time and time again on our show, give Brittany Reese her MF and flowers. We don't cuss, but if we could cuss, <laughs> you know what we would say. Um, so, but before we get into our guest and the fit check. Put some respect on her name. <laughs> Court, you know, y'all. The y'all name is Brittany Reese. <laughs> Before we get into our lovely okay. guest, okay, don't forget to check out trackgirlsummer.com. Corey is rocking our trucker hat today. I got mine close by, but it's not on. We got trucker hats, t shirts, some more dope stuff coming. Um, any other updates that you want to check out? All of our Instagram, YouTube, everything lives at trackgirlsummer.com. Also, when you get your t-shirt or your hat, make sure you take a picture, tag us in it so we can share, like, you know, join the culture, okay? We're here to share the culture. Let us know that you like our products and we'll get more to you. So, Corey, you ready to get the show started? Yeah. Um, fit check today. Um, I'm going for, like, Cali swag, like, giving you a Leah. With the baggy, yeah, this, this is real Cali '90s. Yeah, you know I'm a '90s babies, '90s raise me. Um, lipstick 14s on. Um, Kovu said, you know, if we go on West Coast, Best Coast. Like, let me just put on the black bandana. You know, because if there's one thing my baby gonna do is look fly. You should take a picture, like screenshot this. Um, there you go. Baby. <laughs> So, she's looking cute, like tomboy cute, like always. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. She's giving you natural glam today. I got on no makeup, makeup, no lipstick, but I am rocking my lashes and my lash glue. Um, same old fluffy wig. And I'm just giving y'all grad school life, okay? I'm in a Carolina hoodie because I had class today and... Such is life. This is the vibe on campus. So this is the Track Girl Summer vibe today. I, it, was a, it was a rainy student. day, so I had on some rain boots. Okay, grad student realness. Um, but I'm over your outfit. I'm just, I just really want to get to Brittany Reese. Yeah, let's, uh, let's get to it. Let's get to it. I feel like she's, y'all, she's underrated and unappreciated. And the time for that needs to stop right now. Like, so... If y'all didn't know, she is the 2007 and 2008 NCAA champion in the long jump for Old Miss. She's a four-time Olympian. Did you say Old Miss? I said old. 
It sounded like you said the D at the end. Ole Miss. Am I going to do this in correction or are you going to come at me? I just had to get you right. You know, <laughs> SEC, we, you know, just making sure you. I have a, okay, here's the thing is I'm trying to do Brittany Reese's introduction and it is so long because she's accomplished so much. So I do not well, need to Well, as you said, we're going to put some respect on her name. So I wanted to make sure that we also put some respect on Ole Miss. I said, oh. in, two, in 2009, she got first at the world championships in the long jump. Then in 2010, in the World Indoor Championships, she got first in the long jump. Then in 2011, at the World Championships, she got first in the long jump. Then in 2012, at the World Indoor Championships, she got first in the long jump. Then in the same year, she at, at the London Olympic Games in 2012, she got first in the long jump. 2013, World Championships, what'd she get? First in the long jump. 2016, World Indoor Championships. She got what? First in the long jump. Then we go to Olympic Games, 2016 Rio. She got silver in the long jump. 2017, came back. London, first in the long jump. 2018 World Indoors, she got silver in the long jump. In 2021, Tokyo, she got silver in the long jump. I'm not done. She is number seven, or she's sorry, she is number nine all time. She's tied for number nine all time outdoors. She has the area record and the national record and number four all time in her long jump. Am I done? Yeah. Are you? Maybe. <laughs> Welcome, Brittany. <laughs> you got more. You got more metal. Okay. <laughs> hey, it's been a good journey. Election. I'm just curious. Is good? there a longer streak from 2009 to 2000? 16. Does anybody have a longer streak than that? Definitely not a long jump. No. I can't think of that either. I might end the show right there. Like, do we need to say more? <laughs> we do because she's amazing off the track as well, but my gosh, Brittany Reese. Not one bronze. <laughs> nope. No bronze in my case. Brittany Reese is always top two, and most of the time she's not number two. I'm telling you. Eight <laughs> golds, three silvers. I mean. Yep. My chest hurts a little bit. I'm not going to lie. I'm getting <laughs> this. I'm just like, I'm surrounded by greatness, and I hate my body physically can't handle it. But. Welcome to Track Summer. Thank you so much for coming. It is, it is more than a pleasure to have you. It's an honor. You know, honor I'm, and I'm a grateful. pleasure. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I'm, a, I'm excited for this one. This is, this is cool. Aww. So thanks We're for having me. to have you. Where, where are you at right now? You home? You traveling? I'm in Mississippi right now. Oh. Yeah, I'm in Mississippi right now. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We like to get a little nosy. I saw you were doing some yeah. traveling and stuff, enjoying the oh, yeah. season. I'm, yeah. Leaving again in fr on Friday, so. Okay, be safe in these pandemic streets. In these yeah, pan know, right? streets. Panorama. Hey, that, why does it do this? Um, well, Brittany, I might be on girl all night, so excuse me. <laughs> I would love to know um, how you got started jumping. Mm -hmm. So for me, I got started, I was running track in the seventh grade and I didn't start long jump until the 11th grade. And the way I was started long jump was um, the track coach brought the basketball team out and was looking for a long jumper. Um, he wouldn't give me the opportunity to try out for the long jump because I was running the 400 and I had sprints and all the other things. So he like basically pushed me to the side and like, no, you can't try it, whatever. 
So uh, after a couple people went, I, he finally let me go. And my first jump ever, I jumped like 17 feet. And like he couldn't believe it. He was like, go back again and do it again. So I went back again. And at that time, I jumped like 17 five. So I always tell people it was a hot day in Mississippi. And the bet was whoever jumps the furthest get a Coke. So I say I kind of basically won the long jump because I won a Coke at the end of the day. <laughs> <laughs> But so you picked up the long jump in the 11th grade. Yeah. I'm telling you, mm-hmm. I told you, I have, a, I have a theory that, cause I see this, I say this all the time. Like we see this trend of like these parents pushing their kids to like specialize and focus on track at like three years old. And I'm like, I'm trying to tell you the great ones were like, mm, picked it up in college, decided it decided what I was <laughs> Yeah, well, um, but that's amazing. And I wanted to ask you, because you are the long jump beast, I'd be remiss mm-hmm. to not get your insights on how you approach the long jump, like your technique. I know that you hang or you, like, do you think, mm-hmm. I know some jumpers are more power, more jumpers are more speed. Like, how mm-hmm. how do you jump? I think I'm more, obviously I hang, but I think I'm more of a speed jumper. I feel like a, a lot of the USA athletes are speed jumpers. When you start seeing more powerful jumpers, you start seeing people from like uh, Europe and things like that. So for me, and my everyday, I just don't like to lose, it, to be honest. That's just how I approach the long jump. I, I'm going out to dominate every single time. I'm going out to win um, and not lose. So I hear that. <laughs> I want to backtrack a little bit though because you found the long jump in the 11th grade but you also played basketball and like considered (laughs) 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 so I wanted to hear though like making the choice out of those three now, um, Mm -hmm. choosing to go to Ole Miss, staying home essentially, but a great university nonetheless, SEC. Um, And then I also like to hear, Corey touched on a bit like specializing too early, but I'm curious to also hear, I think it's valuable to hear like maybe some of those transferable skills from basketball to you jumping. I threw a lot at you at once. Yeah, so honestly, yeah, you're good. No, so... A lot of people don't know this, but I went to a community college and played basketball for two years. I didn't even go straight to track and field. I didn't. I was recruited. Um, I signed with Ole Miss out of high school, but ended up taking a scholarship to a community college up the street because of my, my grades, I think it was, my, my GPA. And I went to a community college for two years. I was supposed to go for one, and still I re-signed with Ole Miss, and I was supposed to go. But... Um, uh, my, my basketball team was pretty good. I didn't want to like let them down, so I stayed an extra year. And then the reason why um, I had tons of basketball offers coming out of uh, community college too, and the reason why I chose bat- chose track and field was because in our regional game, uh, the day before our regional game, um, a lot of our teammates got kicked off the team. Maybe like two or three of them got kicked off the team because of uh, weed. They got caught smoking weed. So automatically you just get off. And so we went into a regional game with six and a half people. And the reason why I say six and a half, because our point guard had a hurt ankle. So she basically was useless. Like she just was a body. So <laughs> so we had six and a half people and we got, obviously, you know, we got our butt kicked. And so it upset me a lot. So I got back home and I talked to her on the phone to my mom. And I basically, you know, I was crying on the phone and she was like, listen, you can either stick with basketball and keep relying on other people or you can do track and field and rely on yourself. End of the story. I'm at Ole Miss. All right. (laughs) So, sorry. You said that um, when you go out, you're just there to dominate when regardless. But I've mm-hmm. heard Brittany out there having a good time at competitions. Oh, yeah, I talk. I laugh because I know I'm the best. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> <laughs> but 
I'm not. I'm, I'm, I understand. I'm not because I understand. Um, I watch. I see myself in practice. I, I'm a film junkie. You can ask any of my training partners. I'm a film junkie. I, I I know all my competitors. I know what they can do and everything. So when I'm going to a competition, I know what to expect from everybody else and what I'm capable of, what I've seen myself do in my films and what I just needed to work on to jump those further jumps. So I'm going in relaxed and just prepared, basically. It's mm -hmm. like going to a basketball game or any type of thing. You just go prepare and just go out and do what you're supposed to do. And once you put in that work, there's no reason to go in uh, with any kind of doubt. Right. Well, all right, Corey, you all right over there? Yeah, sorry, my plug like came undone and I was like, you're on 2%, girl. Um, <laughs> but I love that, that like you use knowledge and like understanding your competition and that gives you conf mm -hmm. confidence to step on the, I was going to say step on the track, but step on the runway and be like, yes. I already know what's about to happen. I just have to like do what I need to do to get it done. Yeah, um, basically. And I heard that you became a student of your craft after 2008, after yes. you uh, didn't do that well. Can you talk about that experience? Yeah. Yeah, so in 2008 um, was my first Olympic team, second second world team, basically, uh, second USA team. And I'm still young. Like, I, this is my first year professional. So that's, I'm dating myself, but this is my first year uh, coming out of we're college the same age. I, went, I went pro. <laughs> You're not dating yourself. We, yeah, we okay, good. the same teams. Yep. <laughs> uh, okay, good. Yeah, yeah. So I'm so 2008, my first year professional. I'm you know confused, don't know what's going on. Um, so but in the papers, it's saying that well, not the papers, but you know, on the internet and everything, it's saying like I'm projected third. I'm like, okay, cool, I'm projected third. So go there, get fifth, ride back home, uh, ride back to the to the village. And I'm crying because I knew I had a mindset that I was going to go in and, and, you know, give it my all. And I feel like I didn't do that. And so I made a promise to myself to never get left off the podium again. And I just went back, went back and talked to my coach. I was like, I need to do this, this and this. I watched all the other girls and I saw how, you know, how strong they were, how uh, how they were landing, you know, this body positions. Um, I wanted to look like those girls and, you know, I'm just still skin and bones, but I wanted to get faster and I wanted to get stronger. So I went back and talked with my coach. I saw, um, I saw, um, a dietitian, I saw a psychologist and I just went back and just grind it basically and try to do what I did in 2012 was to get the goal. Well, it sounds like that was a promise that you kept. For a very long time, still keeping it. Yeah, I always tell people, you can lose once or you can lose twice. So if you lose, you lose once and you learn from it, you you ain't gonna make, you're not gonna have that same loss again. And I feel For like sure. mm -hmm. anyone that's proven that to be true, it is Brittany. <laughs> that took one yeah, L and it was W's. Hey, after. I don't. I'm I'm a sore loser. I don't like to lose. So. It is what it is. Well, we see that. <laughs> we see that. So, so tell, talk to us a little bit about um, working with a, I'm assuming a sports psychologist. Um, mm -hmm. I have a, I, I love getting into the minds of athletes and yeah. we see a bit of it on Twitter. I follow you on Twitter and you <laughs> are a joy to follow on Twitter. Because <laughs> you bring the facts, you bring the knowledge, but you bring a little spice too. Yeah. I can't, but, I can't, I can't be proud <laughs> but I think, you know, here at Track Girl Summer, we like to get into the mindset of a champion. So, like, mm -hmm. tell us what that journey was like, you know, mm -hmm. even starting a relationship with a psychologist and how that mm -hmm. helped your career. You know, it, I am when I graduated from Ole Miss, I graduated with a, a English and a degree in English with a minor in psychology. So for a while, um, I was diagnosing myself and just telling myself, you know, certain things. And what really kind of set me off to get a sports, a, a, a really good sports psychologist and not like one from a school was when I had surgery in 2013. Mm -hmm. And um, 
I tore my hip labrum in 13. Yes, I did win the medal in 13, but I did on a tour hip labor. And once I had the surgery a medal, and did, a gold medal. medal. Let's be clear. Yeah. I know yeah. you got a lot of them, but it was still gold. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I tore it in June. I knew exactly. I tore it in Rome. I knew exactly what happened. I just went off and I, I knew I tore it then. Wow. And just what I was doing at the World Championships was Icy Hot, uh, Tylenol, oh, no, Advil, and more Icy Hot. And I just was rubbing my labor the whole entire like competition, just trying to take the pain away as much as I could and still ended up winning. But they call her the long jump that. beat for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, I still ended up winning, but carry on. <laughs> but no, so and when I had the surgery and I didn't bounce back the way I thought I should have bounced back. So in 2014, I think my furthest jump was 680. To me, that's terrible. Like I, I don't see myself ever. If I, I always say this: if I'm jumping below six sixty, I'm, I'm done with the sport because for me, that's not a competitive jump for me. Mm -hmm. um, Excellence is that won't, standard. That won't. Yes, and I don't. And the, for our standard, it's six seventy five. So I'm giving myself six sixty. You know. So I didn't bounce back the way I thought I should have, and um, I thought about retiring right then and there. And so my coach, Jeremy Fisher, recommended a, um, me a sports psychologist and me and her clicked real, real well at the time. And she's the one that brought me back to life and just said, you don't want to retire. You just don't want to lose. And I said, well, yeah, that's true. Yeah. So me and her just talked about it. And um, she got my mindset to back to um, where we call it the inner beast and brought me, taught me how to bring out the inner beast and let other things go when I'm on the runway. So mm -hmm. I, I credit her a lot to my success from from 13 on. So, but she taught you how to bring out the beast, but mm -hmm. you got that nickname at Ole Miss. Yes, but when in 13, when I had the surgery, I lost, I couldn't figure out how to get that mindset back, that winning mindset, because I was so focused on if, what if my hip hurt? Mm -hmm. Or what if, you know, That's I'm not going to jump for it because my confidence in two, leading up to 2012, I knew I was the best. It was not, it was not, it was no brain. It was no track meet that I went to where I was like, you're going to lose. Like, and if I did lose, I, it was on me and I would go back and study and figure out what I did wrong and watch some, some videos with my coach or watch some videos by myself and try to figure it out what I did wrong. But if I lose, it's solely on me. It's no re nobody else's fault when I lose. It's always me. And I just go back and fix the problem. But once I had that surgery and couldn't jump at over a certain distance, she was the one that taught me, this is how, this is what she was doing back then that you can still do now. I think that's so important to highlight because I, I don't think a lot of people talk about the mental aspect of overcoming injury in that mm -hmm. as athletes, we rely on our body. And it's like, if I tell my body to do something, it does it. And when you get injured, all of a sudden you have to relearn your body and also learn how to trust your body again, because it failed you in such a catastrophic way that before you could jump without fear. And you knew at the end of the day, my body's always going to hold me up and have mm -hmm. my back. And then when it fails, you you start second guessing yourself. And sometimes you, you could be completely healthy, but you're like holding yourself back because of that fear yep. that well, what if I injure again? What, what if I'm not the fear, I, what if, I mm -hmm. think I am. Yep. But I think so that- she taught me about my, yes, with my mindset, like she taught me a lot of, of different ways to block negativity mm. because that's what mm -hmm. it was all it was. It was just negativity, un, unnecessary negativity. And she taught me how to block it when I'm on runway she taught me how to block it when i'm at home um she taught me how to meditate and i started meditating um started doing a lot of things to prepare my mindset so when i go to a, a competition nothing comes out but the beast i love that i love that so much you <laughs> you brought up your coach jeremy um can you talk about your guys's relationship how you guys train I know you're at the Olympic Training Center, what that's like. And I, I know you guys you guys throw down a couple bets every now and then. I, I've heard about <laughs> the bets. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I make money off of him. 
<laughs> that's why I'm here. All right, tons of money off of him. Yeah, we have. That's I. I feel like that's just that's me and his relationship. Um, that's how we get things done. Is like through bets. Uh, it, it's it, it can be a bet at practice. It can be a bet at the trap meet. He'll just throw out, "Oh, I'll give you two hundred dollars. You jump this." I'm like, "Okay, bet," and we'll shake on it. And we'll go. I'll go and jump it. In practice, that's just how it is. Like we have a, a I mean, he's not that much older than me. So we does he a, like a, losing a, money though? Because to me, to me, he do. I mean, if you go look at my Instagram, I can count at least ten videos where I've won a hundred dollars. Like, off why of would he bet the? First of all, why would he bet the beat? <laughs> Second of all, he's hey. coaching you. He knows what you can jump. <laughs> hey. Like because some that some practices. It looks like so he'll be like, no, I ain't betting you. But then I, I'll start out looking flat, mm. and he'll be like, oh yeah, this the day I'm gonna get you now. And I was like, all right, I'm just warming up. And then he'll say, all right, hundred dollars for seven thirty from a short approach off of a box. Give him seven thirty five or something like that, and then take a hundred dollars and go do something with myself. <laughs> and cash like brings cash. out the beast. Cash money, okay. money is the motivation. <laughs> you ain't a real competitor if, if you ain't willing to bet on yourself if you ain't really ready to put money right. down on yourself i bet on myself every practice every time it's jump practice i bet on myself but so i, I, I want to go a little bit like because talking about working with jeremy um a few weeks mm -hmm. ago we had will on and so like will clay that is for those of you that yeah. are watching that may not know but like Hearing y'all bet against each other, hearing how Will talks about Jeremy. Can you talk a little bit about that training environment? Like, y'all mm -hmm. are just beasts all around. Like, I yeah. can it's just a, a, imagine a, how that. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's, it's a, it's a, comp it's a really good um, training group. Mm -hmm. Like I said, we got Will, we got Katora, we got Chris Bernard, who's okay. made multiple Olympic teams. You know, and then we have our para athletes who are outstanding. You know, Lex Gillette, who's blind, long jumper, mm -hmm. got silver at, at the Olympics. Um, we have Toby. We have we have so many. We have in our group. I think total we have at least six Olympians, able body and and not. So I mean, the group is it's a tough group. You have to bring the competition every every practice mm -hmm. every jump practice for sure i mean I, I jump against the guys i don't care about them jokers i give me like my little i think i get a meter lead and you can ask them i hold the belt i got the wwe belt oh. they can't they never they have never <laughs> taken it <from> me. <laughs> matter of fact it's right here so if they watching it <laughs> This is our practice belt. Yep. I'm making and a clip of that and adding all the guys. <laughs> <laughs> I've had that belt for two years now. They can't beat me in practice. And they still can't get it. Man, listen. They can't get it. They don't it. call you to beat for no <laughs> reason. I love that you train like you compete and you bring that energy. So I, I understand oh, yeah. now when you say, like, I get to competitions and it's just like, I'm relaxed and you're confident because. Mm -hmm. It seems like you're in an environment where you have you're you're competing oh, yeah. at practice, and yeah. so you're just bringing that energy to the meet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the, and the guys and it, they are outstanding. You know, I and I've said this a couple times in interviews that a lot of that a lot of a lot of the Brittany Reese that you see comes from my training group. Like they are the ones that push me. Um, we don't have we don't let each other have a bad day. Mm. You know, we, we try to turn it around and find some positivity in, in every practice. There's always a day to get better. And when we're all, we're like, we're off, we, we push each other to help each other get on, back on. Um, it's, again, I credit them a lot to my success. Like, they, they've, they've pushed me to the max. I mean, I run with them, with the guys. I'm a run with Couture too, but I run with the guys. I do anything with them jokers. I don't. I don't care. I'm. I'm not backing down from them. So I do definitely credit my my training group for a lot of my success these past couple of years. I love that y'all. Y'all be out there iron sharpening iron. <laughs> um. Definitely. So as I read, it was like a freaking scroll. 
you you have you have quite a few medals but which one mm-hmm. is is your favorite which one was like that's the one oh definitely the London one. um yeah definitely most definitely my my first olympic medal um because of the blood sweat tears and what i went through to get that medal after not being able to get that medal in 2008 that's probably my definitely my favorite my day for my favorite one out of all of them it would be the first olympic one I'm like, I feel like we're just, I'm just in awe of you. I, I want to talk to you a little bit about you off the track because you are just as remarkable outside of track and in the field. Um, first being that you have a son. Can you just talk about how that came to be? and yeah. what that's like. Yeah, so um, with me and uh, his mom are real good friends and um, he was just getting in trouble a lot. And uh, I've, I've known, uh, well, I was there when he was born. So he's basically my godson. And um, so I just helped raise him for basically his whole life. And it came a point in time where um, he was, you know, just getting in trouble and just wanted to be more around me. So that's where we came to uh, understanding that, you know, I'll I'll take him, and so he's mine. <laughs> How old is he? Now he's thirteen. Oh Lord, that's a grown man. Tell tell me about it. Ooh, he's so bossy. Ooh. I think that's. A- I think that says a lot about not only your character, but also your your relationship in that for a mother to be like, hey, take my child and, and mm-hmm. raise them. I don't know anything that could be on um, Alex. His name is Alex, right? Let me, I'm making sure. Mm-hmm. Um, you are I don't right. know anything that can be more humbling for like, like that just comes from a place of love for Alex's mother to be like, Brittany raised my son. And, and to see that, like, Hey, like you are such a remarkable person. Like this is who my son needs to be around. I like, I think that speaks to volumes about who you are as a human being. Appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. He's a, he's a great kid. He, he, I mean, he sports, he loves sports and food. He jumping like that. He's growing like a food. He has. Um, he won um, the long jump in, I think it was two years ago for his age group when he was 10. Okay, okay, okay. Yep, and got second in the 100 and third in 200. He's an athlete. Now, were you his coach? Because I know you. I know that you coach. You know at, it. And you coach at San Diego Mesa College as well, your assistant coach. Can you talk yeah, about... Yeah. I've heard you said that there's a need for more women coaches. Can you talk about one, why you feel that that's, there is that need. And I also appreciate that you're not someone who also just talks about a problem. You become the solution. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's not just women in general. It's black women too. Mm -hmm. uh, Let's just be Mm -hmm. honest. Track and field is more, there's a lot of black people in the sport. Um, And I feel like just me being that back, being back at home and watching, you know, the kids grow up and a lot of their coaches are males and we have a lot of young women, you know, that can be influenced by a lot of these great women around. And I feel like it's, it's good for um, us to see our kind succeeding also and being coached by our type of our women and things like that. So the sport is, I mean, if you just think about it, just SEC alone, um, they do they do a great job of hiring women, mm-hmm. and um, but all the other um, conferences is a lot of male head coaches, a lot of male figures on these team, and then you have a, a team full of women, and um, the coaching staff is men. I just it just yeah. seems weird to me. Like, just feel like you just need to be more women faces when it's white or black, but I prefer. I often say um, too often 
the decisions that are being made for us are being made by people that don't have to make the choices that we make or have to make, don't walk the life that we live, don't walk the experience that we live. Um, so I, I applaud you and um, think that that is, I couldn't agree more with needing more of us and more of us colored women, black women mm -hmm. faces um, as the leadership, as the ones to lead our women onto these um, podiums and uh, these lead these student athletes, but because ultimately being be an example. It's a lot of women. I'm not saying that black women don't coach or women in general don't coach. They're not getting the opportunities to be in these head positions. Yeah, That's what I'm basically, yeah. they're not getting the position. They're, there's tons of them. Mm -hmm. And there are more so at the high school level mm -hmm. and not at the, SEC level because they're great coaches. They just don't get the the opportunity. And we just see a lot of men get those opportunities. We don't see a lot of women getting those interviews that they deserve. Mm, yeah. Well, shout out mm -hmm. to Carol Smith getting that head coaching yeah, position at yeah. GA. And, and, and just look at her her staff. Her resume. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. I mean, a lot. It's a lot of. It's a lot. Of, even the old Miss coach is a is a, a black woman. Mm -hmm. And. She has taken Ole Miss level to now a national level. Like our cross country team is our, which is outstanding. Um, and we have a lot of great athletes come out of Ole Miss. So uh, I yourself Ole included. Miss that type of oh yeah, most definitely. <laughs> <laughs> but we got Sam Kendricks. We have a, we have tons of people. Uh, Isaiah Young. Yeah, yeah, good, good amount. So yeah. coaching is a long term. We're gonna see you head coaching. Uh, uh, University or mm -hmm. possibly. Okay, I'm making some moves. <laughs> All right, we know excellent <laughs> standards, so hey, you'll see me around. But let me tell you something. <laughs> if I was a long jumper and I'm walking into a competition and Brittany Reese is my coach, you can't tell me nothing. You can't. <laughs> no, <laughs> absolutely not. Like. There was a reason why I coached at the community college level. I wanted to not only just gain experience, but I also wanted to make sure that. Oh, hey, um, is that Alex? Hey, Alex. It was. It was Alex. <laughs> <laughs> he, he said he tried to get out the way. <laughs> so come say hey real quick. Who was that? Just come say hey. Hi. Hey, hey. Alex. We just talked about you. About you. I'm in an uh, interview. Okay. Stay in interviews. <laughs> if you ever need somebody oh, to humble you, it should oh, be. Oh, for real. No, seriously. <laughs> Just have a child. Wait, your turn is coming. Corey. Me? You got some years. I've been a mother. You saw uh -huh. my son. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Uh, is your is, uh, <laughs> is dog day? You bossy? <laughs> <laughs> Kobe this morning stood at the door and was like, I don't know about you, but we going on this walk. And I said, all right. <laughs> but, but, you know, that's just, that's just the trials and tribulations of motherhood. You know, we, hey, we understand. Hey, we are hey, all the hey, same. Hey. They keep you humble for sure. They keep you humble. <laughs> I'm, I, I, I refuse. I'm not. <laughs> So, you chose to mother. coach at a community college. Okay, yeah. So, I chose to coach at a community college just to gain experience and uh, just be um, a light to some of these kids, um, to give more kids motivation and showing them that they can succeed. Um, and I enjoyed it. You know, it was the kids are like, um, well, basically, like my kid, you know, just for they were fun to be around and I enjoyed it. A lot. And they actually did really good in them to national. And one of my kids placed um, second in the hundred and third in the two hundred in nationals at the community college. So okay, did okay, pretty well. Yeah. And I wonder if I mean, just speaking from your experience of going the community college route yourself, I feel like I you now being back in that space is like you're like the prime example of like, look. Mm -hmm. And yeah, not only yeah, am I the prime example, but I'm coming back to like y'all. This is exactly. like 
the sky's the limit, you know? So, so I love that. I'm, I'm really big about like us not only achieving our dreams, but you know, going back and paying it forward. Going you back know? and paying, yeah. That's why yeah. when I come home, every time I come home, I, I that's why I'm home to do interviews and I go speak at schools, um, all the way from elementary to high school. I go to all the fo- I go to football games. I go to basketball games. I'm at volleyball games. Like cause I want these kids to to see to see me, mm-hmm. to see that I've made it and what I've done. And be able to have that type of a motivation to go and pursue whatever it is that they want to pursue. I give out scholarships, you know, I do all types of stuff because I want I want those kids to be motivated and yeah. stay off the streets because around here it's getting kind of bad. So if they if they just see a face that they can recognize and know that succeeding, you know, it, it probably can go a long way. Yeah, we have Bianca Knight on as well, and she talked about what she's yeah. doing in Mississippi as well. So. You know, knowing that we have beacons like y'all, paying it forward. Oh, yeah, most definitely. Don't forget where you come from. You're that tangible resource. Oh, no. I mean, mm-hmm. that's just. And I already know what type of coach you are by the fact that you called them your kids and not your athletes. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I, I... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was strict on them, but I definitely. Uh play with them a lot and I, it's just they they enjoyed a lot of the things that we we played a lot of games and but it was to what fact to where they were still getting the workout and but I was I was pretty the, t- the workouts was pretty tough like some of that stuff I made up and I was like I would never run this in my life <laughs> <laughs> I hope none of your athletes are watching this <laughs> Oh, I st- and the funny thing about it, um, I'm glad I made a huge impact on their lives because I talked to the majority of them still. And I haven't coached them in like four or five years. And I still talk to them. So they hit me up every now and then. That's why I said they, they're your kids. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're my kids. It was and- my boys. Because it was mainly boys. <laughs> And you mentioned it, but I wanted to highlight, you have the Reese Scholarship. Can you talk about that? Mm -hmm. Because it's a one male, one female. Mm -hmm. It's one male, one female, and it's at the local, it's at the high school that I attended. And it's for anybody. This is not sports related at all. Um, So basically the school um, writes, gives them a topic and they write a two page essay um, the school picks the top three, and then I pick the final one. And then I go to the graduation and hand them up. I go to their graduation and hand them a check. Personally. Like, what, Corey, what are you doing with your life? I, I don't know. I would just like to be handed a check from <laughs> Reese, okay? <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> but speaking of putting... It goes towards whatever they want to go. Speaking of putting your money where your mouth is, (laughs) because (laughs) not only do you have a big heart for the kids and the generation to come, but you also advocate through your own professional career. And Corey and I have this debate... (laughs) It's not a debate because you you really aren't bringing anything to the table. I don't care. And I know I have arguably <laughs> the greatest long jumper on our show here. And I know our opinions are going to differ. But I'm okay with that. Okay? I can respect the queen. Okay? Can I, can I just ask something? Brittany, can I, you just set the record, mm-hmm. record straight? Please break this down so it forever will be broke and I won't have to listen to Natasha's mouth no more because just go ahead and ask your question, but I just know, Brittany, I need you to set her straight. Well, number one, <laughs> okay. So let's go back. Let's go back. From 2009. 2010, 2011, mm-hmm. 2012, 2013, 2016, indoors, gold medal, silver medal, gold medal, silver, silver, right? Mm-hmm. The people may be wondering, why don't we see the Olympic gold medalist at the Diamond League events? And you're like, where most athletes would be like, 
I got to go make this bag. You're like, we don't get six jumps. If we're not getting six jumps at this competition, I won't be there. If we are, I will and pay me my money. (laughs) Okay. But we're in a sport that um, beyond the six jumps, I, we, we could go on and on. It's, a, it's an episode in itself about us collectively bargaining Correct. and doing things to move the mm-hmm. sport forward for us as the athletes. But as someone who is mm-hmm. literally putting their money where their mouth is and is like, I believe in this cause so much that I'm willing to leave this table this money on the table and let you dusty host. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> let y'all <laughs> go after these Diamond League events. Like, tell us about, obviously, I we, we can just guess how you feel about the sudden death rule. But just explain yeah. to us how important it is to you that the jumpers, the field events have six jumps and what it means to you to why you're willing to be like, hey, if this isn't what you're giving the athletes, I don't care. I won't be there. You're not going to have the gold medalist there. You're not going to have your premier athlete there. Mm-hmm. You know, it means a lot. And it's, it's it's time that we take a stand, not just on this, but on a lot of things that's happening in track and field right now, that the athletes are the people that we bring the attention. We bring the money. We bring the crowd. We bring all that. So we should be the focal point of our event. Uh, not, like you said, the six jump rule, is it's retarded. Um, we need six jumps because we fly 10 plus hours to attract me to jump four or five times. But the way the program is set up, um, only three of the final get the jumps. So they tried to play this, and if I'm, I might be wrong, but I think they tried this in 2000 and. 16 they tried this indoor mm. it was one of them indoor. it was one of them indoors that was in portland i think and, i think you're uh, right they tried yeah yeah so they that. tried it that. then and that's when i it ended up working out for my my benefit because i mean i wasn't about to lose no way so hold on they tried hold on one second it, hold on one second <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> But it, it for a lot of athletes that come in, um, when we get there, the when you have the six jump, it reorders for you. And for a lot of those athletes that don't get that jump, it puts the first, second, and third per- place person that do get the jumps um, at a disadvantage because now you're tired because they make you go straight into it. So you're not able to get uh adam a good amount of rest to where you can perform at your on your best final jump so none of the none of the these final jumps have been further than any other other jumps that they previously jumped in round one through five Mm -hmm. that's that tells a story and then also it just hurts it hurts the athletes and can cause injury and it's just a dumb rule why? Why? It doesn't help? bring attention. It doesn't bring attention. So the reason why they change is they want to bring more attention to the athletes, to the field. We're not on TV. You don't show us on anything. So what is the point of you even giving us five jumps and possibly six? You're not showing us. You show the. You only show the winner. So what was the point of you even taking messing with the jumps? Natasha, I don't, I don't have to advocate. <laughs> answer the question. I mean, I'm not the broadcaster. Oh, now you ain't the broadcaster. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, but I do still stand on. You know, you you said you, you know we it. fly over ten hours. We fly over ten mm-hmm. hours. I only get one shot. My semi might oh, be fa- my semi is always faster than my final. <laughs> Really? That makes sense. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think because the long jump is about jumping, period. Yes, you do run one lap. It is over quick for you guys, but we're used to six attempts. Mm-hmm. And um, we put, I feel like we put a little bit more on our body than you guys do. Like you're, you're done in what, 49, 50 seconds. 
while we have to stay out there for two hours, bamming our body on the ground at sand and sand. So I feel like it's a little bit more uh, impactful than maybe being on the track. So getting those extra rounds with all <laughs> with with getting those ex- getting those rounds with the other competitors allows you to recover so that you can mm-hmm. perform better is what I'm hearing. And what I'm also yes, hearing but is the way- advocating for athletes getting hurt in the long jump by supporting this rule is what I'm hearing. <laughs> <laughs> That's another one. And the way they reorder it is just, it's, it's, it's not good. The way they reorder it for the final three and then the way the the way you win. So they swipe out everything from the first to fifth round and only the top three jumps is determined who get the first, second, and third. So you can break the world record That's in the fourth saying. jump. And on the sixth jump, you won't break. If you, if you foul, you don't get nothing. What happens if everyone fouls? Like, what happens if all three foul? Well, I guess then you have you- to give it to the person that that was already first place. And that's what I was, and that was my solution to a lot. That's what I was telling them. I said, okay, if you guys are gonna go, how about everybody just scratch, and the winner that is supposed to win actually wins, because the person who won the diamond league for the long jump did not win none of the competition until her final jump. Like her last jumps, what made her win the Diamond League every single time? She never had the furthest jump. So what you're telling me is that the best long jumper, but it happens that way the sometimes. The best long jumper. Sometimes the person on the last just jump. how just somehow snuck into the semi, had the race of their life in the final, and they came out victorious. So this is so they, they beat doing. all so those people girl, in the race. They ran faster than yeah. those people. And so she jumped farther on that day. In that no, final. Not on the last day. Not on the day. Not on the day. On that one jump. But, okay, but the women's hundred. Like, you the women's hundred, the women's hundred semi and final is in the same day. And she could have run faster in the semi. But in the final, she didn't run faster. Natasha, I don't understand why you are so like adamant that like <laughs> track and field have to be the same. Like they do different. Like ne- next, I'm not is, saying like, oh, that it has to be the same. Every- I'm saying that. Or do you want like the high jumpers to? Pick I the- see why. The Listen, I'm not one making height. a decision. Everyone, I'm just giving my opinion. One you don't jump. have to like my opinion. I'm not trying to change your opinion. I'm just giving my arguments for why I feel like it's the same. Oh. So my question is, to keep it the same, would you like high jump to be like, hey, we're all going to jump this one height. Everyone gets one attempt because Natasha only gets to go around the track once. Y'all only get to jump once. Sure. <laughs> now you know that don't make no dang sense, Natasha. <laughs> I don't get it. Y'all, y'all get a it. foul. If I, it, you get a foul and you get to do it again. If I step on the line once, I'm disqualified. I think it's a lot easier to... Maybe you should advocate for that, though. You should take that part out. But here's the thing. I think it's a lot easier to not step on the line than to foul. It is... I think it's very... Yes, we're running full speed trying to steer. And we're running full speed trying to steer as well. But you're not jumping while steering. You have you have a lane this big to stay in. They got a they got a board this big to hit. Mm-hmm. And as a hurdler, I understand <laughs> getting my steps right, like the margin of error, and making sure your stride's the same. Mm-hmm. It's it's very. But we also we also talked to Edwin uh, Moses about how important it is to hug that line and run. You know, as as little as you can, just as you're trying to maximize but, the board and get as close. Listen, I'm not trying to argue with the piece, error, okay? The margin for error in the but, sprint <laughs> is much wider. The margin I'm is not moved. Full I'm not it's moved. Here's the point of matter. It's the point of matter, Natasha, is that your opinion doesn't matter. Brittany Reese. I still have moved. one. <laughs> I'm not arguing with the beast. I'm just saying. 
okay? <laughs> I don't have I no margin of error. It's been I that way one all shot. these years, and now you want to switch it. Brittany, all, you know, all and, and, and nobody likes saying. change. I understand that. I understand that. I'm also a creature of habit. I don't like for things to be changed after doing things a certain way for so long. I understand. I do. Let me let me ask you this. Do you think the last three rounds are more exciting than just having six straight rounds? The last the last the last jump, the sixth round, do you think that's more exciting than just watching the full competition as as it is regularly? I honestly I feel like I feel like if I'm there in person to watch it and watch it like the whole time. That wasn't the point. And and but I'm gonna say yes. Because I am also the person that has said that, or not said, I, I truly believe, I don't enjoy just watching uh, domination. I like to see competition. And I like to see who's going to do it under pressure. Who's going to, mm-hmm. I've, I've done the five jumps. We're all tired. Who's going to gut it out for this last one? I do like to see it. I do like to see it's, the, I feel like you don't get out let everybody do that. Hmm? Why not let everybody have that? Because everybody don't make it to the final. The top three people. Because everybody don't make it to the final. There's a lot more than three people. Well, make as, to the in final. our country, there's eight. If we're doing, yeah, if we're doing everything, everything, we're doing but everything it's only exactly. in the top three, right? So it's still first, second, and third. But first, second, and third don't are not the only ones who get it compete. For okay, so would so, you want, so you want would y'all feel exactly better? Same, would y'all feel okay? So would you feel better if it was the top eight? that made it to the last jump, the last sudden death, and whatever you jump in from one through eight, that's how you finish. That might be a little bit I mean, of that's, the, that's how the competition <laughs> is. But... Yeah, that's how it is at the Olympics. The final eight are the ones that get okay. to compete. For so the if first, it's the final eight, then the, the sudden death, death, then... Yes. yes. All right. So the final okay. eight. All right, so make you it final fly. eight then. Don't fly eight people. Yeah. So don't fly ten people out and say, "Oh, only three get the jump for the final for the top three spots." That's not right because I've won a lot of my competitions on my last jump, and I so, can jump from six to first, and right, but I can jump from six to first easily. Yeah, but if I'm so, not in that top three, I don't get that opportunity. So if it's eight in that sudden death, you're more okay with the eight in mm-hmm. the sudden death than three. Okay. Yes. All because right. you're flying, they're usually flying eight to ten people in out there. All so right. it's, it's I, only right that those not old. Can I ask a question? Because I feel mm-hmm. like in the sprint, it's a lot easier to not, you know, fall start than it is to foul, right? So let's say mm-hmm. you make it to the final the final round. Are you a mm-hmm. little bit more cautious because you know if I foul I'm out completely mm-hmm. and you can't really go for a big jump because you have to run it under control and make sure you hit the board. And therefore it's like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you feel like that's maybe the reason why you're not seeing far jumps on the sixth jump? Because it's like, I can't even go for it. Like I want to, because yes. I got to make sure I don't foul because if I don't, if I foul, yes, I'm out of it completely. Yes. Yes. Thank you. 100%. You're not but seeing then, there's, the, you're not seeing the bigger jumps on the last one. That's fair. That's that's fair. But then you see Elaine Thompson who lines up next to Shelly Ann Frazier and she knows I gotta get out next to Shelly Ann Frazier because if I don't get out and she gets too far ahead of me, I might not get her back. So well, hey- is that you're performing under pressure? I'm just, I'm just, just, we're gonna we're gonna make we're gonna make Eight lanes of <laughs> runways. Everyone has to jump at the exact same time, and we have to be in the air while everyone else. We're gonna make we're gonna make a long jump pit the size of a Olympic size pool. I get it. Can- that sounds like it would be dope. Actually, so, you know, so how can you guys get eight and we only get three? I'm with you. How come you get to take eight to the final and we only? get I'm six with you. Three. Let's take let's take eight to the sudden death. I'm with you on that. I you know what? That. You know if if since Natasha wants things to be the same, so the same, we're just gonna take out the jump part com- completely. Let's just race down the runway, like let's just make jumpers into into track athletes at this point. 
to they make are track things. athletes. They're field athletes. Track field athletes. Athlete. Yeah. Field. The field and the track part are completely different. Do you feel like you don't get the recognition you deserve because the powers that be, whatever, has not figured out a way to make field like as marketable as they don't put it on TV as much as the track events? Because I feel like you should. I feel like you should be more of a household name. I mean, like in my heart. You're, you are, but I feel like- I think that's a feeling. Like, again, let's go back to this resume. Who has dominated like this? I know what I'm saying is like, but I feel like Phil does not get the recognition that they deserve. For mm-hmm. for example, um, I think, I think I'm, it might've been to present you. I was at um, annual meeting for USA Track and Field. They gave me, I was presenting for the field events, like field, of, it was you. It was field performer of the year. So it was, I think me, it was. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they yeah. gave me this script, and they said something to the point of like, "Yeah, like not as." If they said something basically th- that equated you field athletes to being like less than track and field. They're like not as. I forget the exact, and I cha- I I was like, I'm not saying this because track is nothing without field, and they. They didn't, I don't think they meant it like that, but it, the way they worded it, I was like, Hang you on. guys are making y'all se- like field events seem like second rate citizens in the world of track and field, mm-hmm. which I don't think is right. I think you guys deserve more recognition. Like we know when the money breaks down, field athletes do not make as much as track athletes. And part of it is because mm-hmm. it's way more marketable to put my logo on a track athlete who I know whether you get first, second or third, if you're in the race, they're going to see my logo where if you're a field mm-hmm. athlete, you better win because they might, and they still might not show you. Um, and that, I feel like I, I am a fan of, and I'm a fan of all the events. So I'm not as much, but like it, it is upsetting to me when I see how they do y'all fly. The, y'all field athletes if i'm being real if i'm being honest yeah and on several different levels honest the female field athletes dominate yeah uh i am underrated i am underappreciated but you know I, my career i've never focused on things like that i just go out and do um what i'm good at and what I love to do and that's competing and having fun out on the track and I do think part of it is because they just don't know how to market um, the field athletes the correct way when we go overseas they love like I go to Germany they love uh, Mahambo I mean absolutely adore her and they make sure they find ways to implement uh, the long jump at certain spots so i've jumped in germany at the brandon gate bridge brandon gate i think it's the brandon gate on a street meet um i feel like th- things like that putting cars up like just they finding ways to market the long jump in the field events like comparing us to jumping the distance of two or three cars you know there's ways to do it to um, show love to the field and they, I just feel like we don't know as a whole in the USA I'm not even going to say overseas because I think they they understand they get it um, I've seen uh, people jump in grocery they did a high jump in a grocery store in the grocery store like yeah. mm-hmm. they do yeah they do pole vaults in malls um, I just don't feel like we we're at that point yet we know how to market our field athletes just as well as um overseas and which kind of get lost and it ain't even just really about um the long jump like look at what ryan crouch did this year like he does not get the credit that he deserves this man broke the world record you know what i'm saying like and not by a little bit and we don't we don't hear those type of things um it's just it's unfortunate look what the the triple jumper from uh Venezuela broke, I mean just a dominating performance she's going to be the first woman to ever jump fits like 16 meters like 
and nobody understands how magnificent, how great that would be. And just the field events just don't just don't get that attention. And like you said, Corey, it's because we we're not uh, on TV as much, and we don't have the opportunity to show the logo as much. The, the minus the fact that we bring in a lot of medals as the USA, like field events bring in tons of medals um, every mm-hmm. year. And just, but the, you don't hear about it. I mean, you'll hear about it, but then you don't hear about it. I think it's laziness, honestly. I think, um, you know, I <laughs> maybe lazy isn't the word, but we we've mm-hmm. talked lazy. about. I, it, it, it's it, it's laziness <laughs> because we've talked about even in some of the broadcasting where stories are missed where there are stories but I think one of the things that other sports do a great job of that we miss out on is the grassroots marketing and your examples of like using cars to show how far we're jumping you know having competitions mm-hmm. in grocery stores like You know, basketball is so marketable because of how close the fans are to the game. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Lausanne, certain stadiums, like, you feel like you're in the crowd. Like, Paris, like, they're close to the game. They're close to the field. And I think, you know, when you do things like bringing the sport to the grocery store, bringing the sport to the mall, it gives an opportunity for people to reach out and touch. I always say like, reach out and actually touch the athlete. Those street races are popular because it's like, yeah. oh, I can get up close and personal exactly. to these athletes. Mm-hmm. And that's a lot of the stuff that they do overseas. And that's, you know, we go to those meets and have a lot of fun because it's like, yeah, you're you're having this experience with mm-hmm. the fans. Yeah, you're there to do a job, but you're having these experiences with the fans yeah. and it gives the fans an opportunity to connect with the person and so that they go Mm -hmm. back and they're like, Oh yeah, I remember seeing such and such perform. So now I'm going to watch the diamond league and the Olympics Mm -hmm. and the, this and the, that, but we don't do that grassroots stuff here in the States. Nope. And, and I've jumped in this, this is Germany. I jumped at an airport once on the old airport in Germany Mm -hmm. and it was music playing and just an overall great atmosphere. And, Again, we just don't know, like you said, lazy. I'm not going to say we just don't know. They know. They, they know because they, once to. upon a time, Jackie mm-hmm. Joyner, Kersey, Mike Conley, and those guys were jumping in the grocery store. It's mm-hmm. been done yeah. here. <laughs> it's yeah. been and done. I, just don't want I, just to. See, I just want to see, because I feel like it transfers to so many other things. Like, Natasha, if you could bring this picture up. Like, I want to see more campaigns with you in these off whites looking amazing. Like this is one of the most exciting campaigns I've ever seen Nike put out. And I'm like, I've always said, why don't they use Brittany Reese more? You are one of their most winningest athletes that they have on their roster. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, I want them to utilize the actual stars of the sports, the actual, the actual Mm -hmm. beast. Whether you know, you know be good, but it's it's I would love to go to, I mean, uh, for example, it made me laugh, but the sweetie video where she's trying to be a like in soccer cleats, you know, why you couldn't have a, a somebody that's knowledgeable tell you that you need to be in some track spikes or helping you with things like that, or just like commercials when you see athletes. Uh, when you see models running around the track or doing something, they don't grab actual athletes. They just grab models. Mm-hmm. Bro, if I have to see like, that Playtex sport commercial one more time with terrible hurdle form again. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like, I, why you don't grab athletes? It don't necessarily have to be, you know, me. But why you don't grab? We have you, Team USA is the the best team in the world. In the world. Mm-hmm. You have that advantage to grab an athlete. You can't tell me it's because we don't look good. That's what I'm saying. Like, track athletes have the body. And And the face. A lot of our track athletes and the face. And our our athletes are are nice. And I don't understand why we can't grab one and be like, oh, can you do this little 10-second 
they ain't going to commercial for us. Like, it's not that hard for them to pay us to run a lap or just come out the blocks or fake jump or something like that. I don't know. I don't get it. I've never gotten that. Well, but, I'll yeah, be that was a fun campaign, I, though. I want I want to see I want to see Britney Reese long jump spikes. I, I I'm gonna start jumping just so I can wear them. I want to see um <laughs> I want to see the Britney Reese car commercials where she's jumping over cars. I I want to see um Britney Reese in the grocery store jumping and getting her uh, <laughs> Safeway H E B Kroger's commercial. I want it all and I want it now. Uh, <laughs> I want some to respect you. on her name. <laughs> I, I feel like we are way over time. Too. I don't even care. <laughs> <laughs> we do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all are Natasha, do you have any final questions for Brittany? I'm like, I, I don't want to. I do. I, I just, I want to hear. I mean, we heard so much of like, what you're up to, how you're advocating through sport, but also through coaching and the things that you do. But, you know, is there anything else that we can look out for? You know, World Championships is home next year. Like, what should we be thinking when we're, you know, cheering Brittany Reese on? Um, how can we champion any of your initiatives? Like, what do we need to be on the lookout for? How do we support? How do we send you money? <laughs> Ooh, cash. No. Uh, <laughs> we, he's come no, back I got with a couple cash. things. <laughs> yeah, you know, I've got a couple things in the works. Probably another scholarship fund. Um, uh, I'm working on trying to get my own track club, summer track team. Okay. Um, down here in the coast because these kids don't get that opportunity to um, – what I've learned over the years – following football and following basketball, they, these kids get the opportunity to go to campuses and visit mm. and talk with these coaches mm. and go compete against some of the top athletes in the world, in the United States. And track, we, well, not track personally, but in Mississippi, because I never ran on the summer track program. I think Bianca Knight did, but I never did. And I live on the coast side of Mississippi, Bianca Knight's more inland but um we don't have a track program to where we are able to take these kids to the lsu's i mean lsu is right here to alabama to some hbcus i mean mississippi's tongue is full of hbcus have these athletes travel over the summer and you know be able to go visit colleges and talk with track coaches and see what needs to be done for them to be able to enroll. Um, I feel like that's one of my main goals and that's probably something that I'm destined to do is to bring that type of awareness to these kids to get them that exposure that they need to be able to go to some of these top schools and get these scholarships. So be on the lookout for something like that. Um, I'm planning on trying to get a bus, my own bus, and take these kids around to different track meets in. We'll stay tonight. We'll go to South Carolina. We'll go to California. We'll go. I mean, just take them and let them visit some schools and take a pick and let these coaches see what they can do. South Carolina got some. We got a youth meet coming up. When we get the dates, I'll be sure to let you know so you can. I'll be in South Carolina. I'll be at um, what's the school? The little school in South Carolina right now in Myrtle Beach. What's the school called? Don't get me to lie. It's a lot of small okay. schools out here. <laughs> <laughs> it's not really small. Coastal Carolina. Coastal Car- Yeah, yeah, yeah. Coastal. So um, I'll be there next week putting on a track camp. So. Oh, okay. Give me on the guy for that. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, so. What What I love about Brittany Reese is we said, hey, Brittany, how can we support you? You said, well, I'm trying to get scholarships for these kids. I'm trying to get these kids to go to camp trying to get a bus to take these kids around. I'm putting on a track camp. We asked how we support, support <laughs> you and me support you these kids. Put, like pour into oh, yeah. this next generation. And that's why I said like your resume speaks for itself, but your heart Gold. unmatched. Appreciate like it. um Appreciate it. 
about we, what he's always we about. We really appreciate you. Um, and with that, appreciate I think that's a good note to end this interview that I'd never want to end. Um, but no, <laughs> what's a good note to end it on is do your thing, Corey. Put some respect on Brittany Reese's name. Okay. I'm going to get up and yell. <laughs> Y'all are going to stop playing with Brittany Reese. Okay. Let me tell you this right now. Okay. She's called the beast for a reason. You mess around and find out. You don't put. Corey, calm down. I can give you eight <laughs> reasons. <laughs> I can give you eight reasons. Okay. And they all gold. Put some respect <laughs> on her M F and names. Here at Track Girl Summer, we're here to give the flowers now. We Look, give you roses, some flowers tulips, tomorrow. Daisies, okay, orchids, what's your favorite flower? Flowers. Okay. Like sunflowers. sunflowers. You ain't seen domination like this before. Okay. Just and then just just a, a pure class act. I'm going to do me, but I'm also going to advocate for these other athletes. I'm going to advocate for the youth. I'm going to advocate for where I came from. Put some respect on her name. Put some respect on Brittany Reese. Appreciate it. <laughs> Am I good to do the outro now? <laughs> Thank you guys for joining us today. We'll re watching this um, for our first pre recorded show. Uh, make sure you follow me at the Corey Monster, Natasha at Natasha Hastings, and most importantly, the LJ Beast um, on all the things, especially on Twitter, but um, on all the things. And make sure you're following Track of Summer on Instagram, YouTube, um, Twitter. Go to our website, buy a shirt, try to look like me, get a hat, um, like see <laughs> it fits so well with the outfits, and um, tune in for the next show. Um, I don't know when this is airing, so I don't know when the next show is. Um, <laughs> and I don't know what year it is. It is always Britney Reese's summer. Okay, I had to change the outro tag <laughs> because. So wait, you got to do that matter. one more time. You got to do it one more time because said, it froze, and and we have to catch that on the the. So remember, no matter what time of the year it is, Brittany Reese is on the podium. Remember what? Remember what time of the year it is? It is Brittany Reese's summer, and that's it. <laughs> this. I'm Bye, changing on that I'm note. I'm changing to <laughs> a Brittany Reese stand account. All we're gonna be posting from now on is Brittany Reese highlight reels. Thank you, Brittany. Thank you guys. <laughs>